beautiful day. Uh, itching already. Well, welcome back. I'm here in the woods, uh, obviously. Gonna do a new series. Thought of something quite different that I don't think's been done before on YouTube. Essentially what I'm gonna do is try and find the most cramped, confined, and claustrophobic spaces to try and camp in. I don't know what that's gonna be like for me, probably quite uncomfortable, but for you guys, it might be quite enjoyable to watch. And hey, it's something different. Got my day pack with some camping gear in. I have got an ax this time, although there won't be too much need to use it. Uh, and I've also got a bivy, and this is part of what's gonna be fairly cramped, but it's gonna be great to be able to have a shelter that's low down because all these boughs are about head height now as I'm kneeling down. You guys are probably thinking, hey, why is there a 12 year old filming on your channel? Where's Mike gone? Yes, the beard is gone. I cut into my cheek line a little bit too much, trimming the other day. I had to reset. You folks know what it's like, well you blokes know what it's like. And uh, yeah, baby, baby, baby face Mike is back. So welcome to baby Mike camping. So this is how dense it is in the surrounding area. Pretty, pretty uncomfortable, not the most dense, but we're gonna start slow with episode one, a claustrophobic camping. And we're gonna build it up. Oh, it's nice and dense over here. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll camp here. Yeah, look at that. This could be a good spot. This is the this is the plan, is to try and find the most confined space to camp. I'm getting eaten alive by bugs. But yeah, this looks good actually. Hmm. I'm torn, maybe under here, under this tree. Hmm, where to camp? There's game trails all through this forest. Oh look, <clears throat> someone has been here before and that is looking brown. Found one of these on my last trip, last video. The, the magpies have been at work I reckon. Another broken bird egg. Poor fella. Well actually he could be, he could have got out so hopefully he did. Or she. Yeah, look at this, this is getting dense. A bit like me. Part of the great thing about this series is just exploring different areas, new areas. But this, where I'd normally look for, oh, that's bright, especially on the old baby skin, where I'd normally find areas that have a bit of space and open air to camp in, I'm, I'm, I find myself searching for the darkest, dingiest corner of the woods. And it's actually quite exciting. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this because I'm certainly a little bit sceptical about whether I'm going to enjoy it or not. Oh, this looks nice and dark. Problem is, is it's easy to get lost as well. Hmm. So here's another thing with claustrophobic camping. No signal.
So, big shout out firstly to Snug Pack. They sent me this Stratosphere, it's called. This is their, their bivy, UK company, and makes it quite unique because it, they've got these um, poles which bend and allow most bivvies, well, most bivvies that I've got anyway, just come up to here and you just have a little hood on them like a, like a sleeping bag really, like a mummy bag, and they just zip up to your kind of chest level and you can cocoon yourself in it, but there's nothing protecting you from the elements um, on your face. So this is the first time I've used a bivvy that has these hoops here, which are like tent poles really, they're, they're super lightweight, and it just means that, that you get some head space to begin with, but also if it rains, you're not gonna get a wet head. And if it's really buggy in the summer, which is coming up to summertime now, uh, you've got, there's some mesh as well, so you can protect yourself from the bugs. And I think that's pretty unique anyway. So I'll pop a link to this one in the description below. Thank you, Snug Pack. Uh, it's, it's gonna be cozy, that's for sure. Uh, but it's pretty much about a kilo, I think, in weight but it's good quality, I think it's nylon, 5000D, 5000, sorry, millimetres hydrostatic head, so you're not going to get wet inside, probably going to get a bit, quite a bit of condensation because your face is low to the ground, but at the end of the day, it's that or get soaked by the rain, so I, I'm quite impressed with that, and like I said, there's these flexible, lightweight poles and very lightweight pegs, so we'll see how it goes, this actually is another unique thing, it kind of pulls out, just to give it a some rigidity up here so the I'm, i've only got it on the lighter setting i can go a bit more tension here but it also allows the rain to run off a bit easier um, which is good for some to bead the rain off uh, but it also allows ventilation as well so that because there's mesh here there's a mesh window you can just about see it there and that will mean that the you can you know the moisture levels are lower and there's somewhere for your breath to go and farts Oh man, it's so cramped. Damn cramped in it. So I think under here, I've just spotted it, there is a bit of mosquito mesh net. Guys, I found it. There is a zip here, a separate zip underneath, and that gives you the mosquito netting. And it also, I guess, allows you to see out into the sky, the sky and the stars at night. So that's pretty cool. So very, it's a three quarter length zip, goes all the way down. There's also a Velcro here. So it's a bit easier so you don't have to zip it if you want quick in and out for the military. There's guys obviously that need to get in and out of their bivy bags fast. There's Velcro as well. Snug Pack have made things for the British military before. And I think some of their, sleep, I've had their Elite 4 or Elite 3 sleeping bag. I think it's Elite 3 or Elite 4 sleeping bag for years it's quite big but it's very very good quality synthetic one um, but they do tons of other cool camping stuff I'll put a link to Stugpack's website in the description below for those of you that know the program SES Who's Dare, Who Dares Wins awesome program love it on channel 4 I think it was uh, they supplied the sleeping bags to all the kind of uh, contestants on that show which is really cool I think it was the sleeping bags but it, they supplied something I think it's the sleeping bags. Time to get in it. I'm only a little guy, <laughs> but this is bit. This is long. If you're over six foot, you will have a lot. Still, quite a lot of length of room in here. Instructions. Get those up. Okay. Just take that off. Oh. Oh, this is cool. Let's zip the mesh mosquito net up. Oh, I like this. I quite like this. It's more spacious than I thought. Yeah, nice to have the mosquito mesh. Hello. Yeah, this is a good touch, the mosquito mesh, because actually I can look up, I can see the forest around me and the weather. This is a good touch. This is not bad, you know, folks. And actually, if I, if I unzip the, the mesh and zip up the back. Oh, now there's a bit more headroom. Okay, now we're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
This is cool. Yeah. Like her. I bet the condensation will be there. But that is, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that is that was better than I expected. This is what we've got. Gloves, not a necessity, but always keep them in my backpack anyway. Sleeping bag, sleeping pad, first aid kit. Shamarg, not necessary, but always have it in my backpack. Two liters of water, tend to do these two liters, getting warmer weather now. I can get, get away with one, but two liters of water. Stainless steel cup as well to cook in, boil water. Folding cup for other drinks if I want to. Again, not necessity, but handy to have. Saw, knife. This is rations, and I've made a custom pack of rations. I'm gonna show you this, guys, in a minute. This is military rations. My fire lighting and cordage kit, and knife sharpening tool maintenance kit. A folding stove, and this. Not a necessity on this trip, but what an axe. So I've made a custom MRE ration pack from two different military countries. Uh, the Norwegian Arctic Field Ration and the British Military Operational Combat Ration. Let me lay it out and I'll show you what I've got. Main meals, chili con carne and cooked rice, both British military. Then energy drink wise, well drink wise we've got the grapefruit, grapefruit flavoured drink powder, British military. Then the real uh, lemon drink, energy drink powder for Norwegian military, that stuff's amazing. British military, salted peanuts, British military matches. And then British, yep, yeah, the red chilli sauce and the strong mints. Then we've got Norwegian instant freeze-dried coffee, British tea, Norwegian disinfectant wipe, <laughs> British disinfectant wipe. And then for breakfast, nothing big, just a Norwegian real meal, cranberry, and a protein bar, and a dark chocolate bar. That is it. We're going a bit minimal today. I'm going to have this, I think. Sorry, the lemon. I didn't have this before. These were incredible. I gave these a 10 out of 10 last time. They are unbelievable. So we're gonna try the Norwegian lemon energy drink and then get cooking up some food. This is what's great about the Norwegian real meal ones is you can add your water, seal it, and just shake it. You have to stir it. So it's, and you don't have to waste a cup. You don't have to use a cup, get gunk in it, waste it. Just pour it in, everything's in this. Only downside is the drinking part isn't easy. That is bang on a lemon sherbet or sherbet lemon. Absolutely bang on. Let's just be clear on what this trip is about. It's not about survival. It's not me preaching any survival tips to anybody. It's not about bushcraft and showing off bushcraft skills and what you can do in, with nature. It's just camping. It's just claustrophobic camping in a dense forest. Me having fun out here on my own and hopefully you guys enjoying it. But that is it. End of, bottom line, that's what it's about. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's just something simple, it's something fun. I thought it'd be a cool idea for a series. And uh, yeah, cheers. What I'm using is a folding firebox stove. These are just folding stoves. They haven't, they haven't given me this stove, by the way, full disclosure. I paid for this years ago, look at it. I've had this absolutely years. Stainless steel, it's fairly heavy. I think they do titanium ones now, but it's great. Um, it's got an ashtray on the bottom that catches all of the ash so it doesn't fall through. And that sits on a little lip there. Now what I add is this, which is the cup holder. Now, this really surprised me uh, how good this was. I've never used it until this year. I've had it that many years. But what I found is really good for is so a firebox, what it does is it helps to contain your fire and it produces a much more efficient flame because it's just contained in there. So to boil your water is much faster. Um, you're utilizing the early flame. 
what I use is this cup holder, I tend to sit my cup on top like that and then it sits on these which go through it, if I can hold it like that, and then it sits on there. You guys have seen it in my videos before, right? But what I found it's really good at is it's basically like a spark diffuser or a spark arrestor on a wood stove because you get the fire going, as soon as you get the flame in there pretty much, you put the cup in and then you feed sticks through this hole, right? The, the sparks have nowhere to go because they hit the side of this stainless steel drinks cover or support, I don't know what it's called, and it diffuses them really quickly. There is no sparks. So I found it's been really useful for that. And I'm also putting it on this, which I haven't used, which is the grill or grate that you can fry steaks on and things like that. That also goes on the top, but I'm using it on the bottom for a bit of added security. Double ashtray, folks. Double ashtray. What does it mean? Now what I'm going to do is add the rice, which isn't cooked, warm, but you can eat it cold because it's already cooked, to the con carne, and that way I've got a rice con carne dish. This was my thinking, this is why I did a custom, custom MRE. Let's give it a go. Concarni is really good. I'd say the rice isn't that great. I'm gonna give it a five out of 10, this meal. I didn't do myself justice when I put it together. I thought it'd be a good combo. It would be, but yeah, I've, I've had better. That's the other thing I did bring, is a hoodie. Temperatures are due to get down to about um, three degrees tonight, I think. So my sleeping bag is still my all season, three season winter sleeping bag. So I'm prepared for it. So the eagle-eyed among you will notice that I didn't use the matches in that fire. And that's because I was using a lighter because I wanted to get the food done quickly. I'm going to show you a little trick with these. Uh, I was going to show you tomorrow actually but to light the fire with these but I'll just show you. Those of you who remember a couple of 24 hour episodes ago, uh, these were quite tricky and they are quite fiddly to use. That's the match strike paper there and then the match, and they just they just broke, they were just, they are a bit naff, but there is a knack to them, and I wanna show you quickly now. So in previous episodes, I had the match strike paper here, uh, I was holding it just on the ground, and just trying to strike the match, as you would traditionally strike the match, and it just took a while, and it was fiddly, and they aren't great, in general, they're not great. Um, but something that you can do, is actually fold the match paper. So you fold it over the match, and you hold it and you pull. It doesn't always work first time. Oh, just got bitten. There you go. Got that burnt through quite quickly. So it works. It's not an amazing way of doing it. It's not an amazing, I think what lets it down is not the match itself, but the strike paper in the British military combat rations. It's just not very rough. It's a bit smooth and it wears off really quickly. But yeah, that's just a little tip of how to light them. I struggled, a couple of guys dropped me some comments saying they've done it that way before, pulling it. Um, but it's just, again, it's fiddly to hold and there's not enough strike paper on it to kind of pull it through with friction. But it is what it is, just a little tip. 
and cheers for the folks that gave me that one hopefully you guys may have learnt something from that one I think we're going to wait till it gets dark now we've got two and a half hours until sunset so I'm going to let the sun set and then um, yeah we can see the setup in the darkness and see see what it's like bird noise is dying down now it is dark though you can't really see I'll turn the camera around in a minute the the woodland is totally different at night where you it, it feels really dense and the branches because the light where it reflects off the the camera light and the torch the head torch the branches are just right in front of your face it seems a lot clearer in the day I was quite surprised at night how different it feels but the birds, this is what I like about this time of year, the birds obviously chirp away until quite into the into the evening, late evening really. Like it's nine o'clock now. And you still hear them. They're obviously getting ready to nest up in the claustrophobic nest. But let me show you this. So this is the tent just here. And then there's obviously I cleared a few branches on these trees just above the tent to stop them falling on it and then yeah it just starts to get pretty dense especially if I try and boost it is that working yeah look at this this is right in front of the tent wherever you go there's, there's branches so it's kind of creepy I can barely move <laughs> barely walk around you know I crouch down here it's just branches everywhere a little bit of a gap uh, definitely gonna hear animals come through this but it's it's cool it's just different is what I'd say I like a nice open woodland or better still a nice coastal view when I'm camping or a mountain view oh is that the moon yeah there's the moon can you guys see that just there That'd be the moon thing with this type of bivy is obviously stealthy and low profile once you're in it there's not much room for maneuver so it's a get in and stay in type job and um, just yeah settle down for the night all sorts of noises now my eyes will be on stalks later <laughs> Try and bring you in. You're not gonna. F you're not gonna fit with me today, folks. Normally, you'd fit in here with me in the old tent, share a story or two. But it's just too. Co it's too cozy. That's me lying down, and that's where the top of the bivy is, which is fine because there's a mesh vent above or behind my head. There's a pocket just here. If you can see that. You can't really see it, but there's a mesh pocket just there. But this is like the the furthest away the material can get away from my face. So it's cosy. It's very cosy. Fully expecting condensation in the morning, but hopefully a good night's sleep. So I'll catch you guys in the morning. morning well that was not as bad as I expected to be fair uh, there was condensation but I've wiped I've wiped some of it off the vent at the back definitely helps so to be honest yeah it's, it gets condensation but for such a small lightweight shelter it's pretty impressive 
I do like, you know, compared to a normal bivvy bag, which I still use and enjoy. Get some coffee on, and then it's a fast pack up. I want to try that Norwegian instant coffee. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be like, oh, instant coffee. Yes, I feel the same about instant coffee. So don't worry. But apparently, the uh, Norwegian coffee is one of the best instant coffees in the MRE scene. So this is it. Apparently it's good stuff. Freeze dried instant coffee. Cheers. I have to admit, for instant coffee, that is really good. I can see why people rave about it. The weather's starting to change here now in the UK. We're finally getting some warmer weather. So that's going to be on to new, new types of video. I know there's some, um, there's the keen bushcraft guys who follow my channel who like the sort of pure bushcraft stuff. I've got some plans for that coming in the pipeline. But also, I've got uh, some really, I, I don't want to give too much away, but I've got some really cool different style camping videos coming up as well. I like the kind of quick deployment of this as well. So you can just set it up fairly fast. Obviously quicker than a tent because it's just two poles. And that's that's quite good actually, I, I do like that. Breaks down nice and quickly. I know it's not as claustrophobic as it looks on the camera, but I am using a wide angle lens so it makes everything seem a lot bigger. But believe me, it's a pretty dense woodland. And like I say, we're, we're gonna start with baby steps. So we'll start with this type of woodland, then we might look for something a bit more dense. Maybe we'll go to some urban areas. I don't know, you guys let me know some suggestions below of some good places for claustrophobic camping. Uh, yeah, I, like I say, I've not seen it on YouTube before, so hopefully we'll um, we'll do some more videos like this, and uh, you guys can enjoy watching them. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your views, appreciate your support. Uh, we're approaching two million soon, so maybe we'll get it this year. That would be absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, just this journey has been unbelievable, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. So I do really appreciate it. Uh, also, go and check out my dad's channel, TA Fishing. He's coming up to 300,000 subscribers. We're so close to, get him, to getting him there, guys. So please head on over to TA Fishing and hit the subscribe button and watch some of his videos. We've got some uh, videos planned together as well this year. So keep an eye out for that, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.